Hey there, comic book fans. I am back from the comic shop again this week. And I picked up six comics. Four were on my pull list. Two I pulled off the shelf. There's a couple others I may have pulled off, but they were too expensive. I was like, man, comics are so expensive. I think these six cost me 30 bucks. And like the one I was looking at was like an $8 comic. I'm like, ooh. Plus I had like a couple of $5 facsimile editions from Marvel and DC. I was like, no thanks this week. But let me show, st special. I'm going to start off, start off with the top of the printer comics, except my new printer just broke. I had to return it. I, that's what I was just doing after the comic shop, is dropping it off at the UPS store uh, for to return it to Amazon. My same last printer I had, eight years it ran, just got this new one, same exact model, ran two weeks. I had to return it. I have to get another one, but hopefully that one will work. But anyway... Top of my printer museum comics. No printer. Uh, we got Crossfire, number, what number is this? Dan Spiegel art, number seven. And I like how he made that movie camera, the shadows on it, make it look like a giant gun. And here we have Amazing Spider-Man. Hammerhead is out, issue 130. John Romita cover with, what's his name? Tony Molinaro. I don't even know if I got that last name right. He did a lot of, he assisted, I think, and did a lot of stuff with John during these Spider-Man days. But he inked this one. Look at that. Hammerhead, he'll bash you with his head. That, that That's my supervillain team, let's see. Hammerhead, Rhino, what was the other one? Ramrod, uh, Man Bull. Ooh, and there's one other on the team. They all bash you with their head. That's their superpower. So the, I call them, I always wanted to see them together as a super team called the Headbangers. But, you know, <laughs> there you are. Now those two will go away, and I'll pick a couple new ones out to look at all week. All right, first comic I got this week. Uh, I, I got three different size comics. This one's a small one named... Sunflowers by Kesey King. Who publishes this one? Silversprockets.net. So are they the publisher? Yeah, Silver Sprockets is the publisher. I, I, I. Something about this must have caught my eye. I like the cover, but I was like, "What this one? What is this one about?" It's an autobiographical comic about living with bipolar disorder. So I have to imagine it's not the most fun comic in the world. But I like stuff like this, so uh, I'll give it a read. It's a, it's a, well, I guess it's full color. Some weird colors in there. Who's, who, what did I say? It was right. Keezy Young, K-E-E-Z-Y. -E -E most people think mania is fun. <laughs> Sunflowers. Um, like I said, I, not, uh, an $8 comic, too. Not to... Uh, well, it's mostly, it's an arty comic, so I'm okay paying $8 for arty comics. It's got some nice spot gloss on the front. Let's see that spot gloss glare. There we go. So, nice little arty comic I got. Up oh, here's one. You can tell me what that logo is. I don't know what that logo is. The Six Fingers. This is the second. I pulled this one off the shelf. I was just uh, looking around and said, oh, that one looks... Let's see. The writer is Dan Waters. Summit Kumar is the artist. Lee Lowridge is the colorist. Uh, Aditya Bidikar is the letterer. Let's see, we got Tom M Mueller is the designer. Will Dennis is the editor. And Erica Schnatz is the production artist. So, like I said, I picked it up. Looked, thought the art looked okay. And it's only a $4 comic. Not a five dollar comic. And I think it's a little. I think I think you get more. It feels like um, maybe a forty page comic, at least thirty two, and it's comic from front to back. So I was like, for four dollars, that's okay with me. So it's the price of com. Like I picked up an Archie comic. I think it was uh, a, a one shot of something. I forget what of Archie because I've been buying those Archie horror ones. This was more an Archie superhero. And it was a $4 comic, which wasn't too bad. But like half of it was ads and back material. I was like, eh. Um, oh, let's see. Record-breaking 350th issue. I don't know whose record it's breaking. Um, this is Spawn 350, a $5 comic. So it's extra bait. Look, next issue, it wants you to know it's still only $2.99. That's why I'm buying it, because it's the last of the $2.99 comics. And we finally have um, Spawn. Has, they, 
and a whole bunch of people have been battling in hell to see who gets to be the king of hell. And in this issue, we gets to, we, we'll find out who gets to be the king of hell. Uh, Rory McConville has been writing it. Oh, Todd McFarlane's got an additional script in this one. Oh, two artists on this. Our, our, our regular Carlo Barberi, and it looks like Brett Booth has joined him to draw some of it. Doesn't say who draws what. Maybe they're switching off on penciling and inking or whatever they're doing. So record-breaking Spawn 350. Got I've got quite a few issues of Spawn now. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> then we've got Space Usagi, Death and Honor, 3 of 3. This is the nice cover on that one. I like these. Uh, this is a reprint of a 90s Space Usagi uh, comic by Stan Sakai, except it's colorized now. The reprints are colorized. Guess how, that's how they're getting them out before they put them into color books. But uh, who's doing this cover? Let's see if it tells us. It, it must. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Cover, cover, cover. Cover gallery with credits on the inside back cover. Hey, at least it tells us that. Let's see. There's our color. This is Sweeney Boo standard color. I dig the Sweeney Boo standard. And the other one is by Jennifer L. Meyer variant. Didn't seem to see that one. But yeah, I'm, I've been buying... I have the originals. I've been buying the colorized reprints just to kind of read them again and support Stan Sakai. Oh, and here we go. Savage Dragon 268, Eric Larson. This one you don't dare miss. I think I read uh, on Images Facebook that this is a jumping on point. Uh, and that looks like it's uh, Malcolm Dragon's wife, Maxine, punching him in the gut. And she doesn't have superpowers, so we'll have to see that. What, what's going on here. Whoa, he's as big as me this time. You tore my shirt. <laughs> Megaton Man versus Savage Dragon. Is that our backup? It's a 90s grudge match. Now, not said. I guess instead of Nuff said, it says not said. Let me see if that's in the back here. Roughneck in Frankenstein Force. Nope, that's not in the back. I guess that's just a random back cover for us. But I always enjoy Savage Dragon. We'll see what happens this issue. And the let's see, the last thing I picked up, picked it up off the shelf, the, a third size. So I got the small size, the regular size, and the magazine size. Oh, it looks we have... That's the back. And that's the same art with a logo right over the front of it. If you find this, I'm already dead. I have no idea what it's about. It's Matt Kint is the writer. Dave McDade, I guess, is the artist. And Bill Crabtree is the colorist. Um, yep, Letters by Jim Campbell. No idea what it's about, but I generally like Matt Kint. I flipped it open. I like the artwork. It's got this matte paper inside. It's got a glossy cover and matte paper inside. Um... There's the two of them. But I figured I'd give it as a $8 comic. Feels like it's 32 pages, I'd say. Just go all the way front. To, oh, oh, there's some material on the back. Um, but I figured I, like, uh, I like Matt Kint's stuff in general. I, li I like it when he draws his stuff better. It looks better than when he, someone else draws it. But like, Flux House, I think, is the Matt Kint imprint at uh, Dark Horse. So we'll see how this one is. Let me show you a little bit of my artwork. What do we got here? This is Dreams of Things. So we're going to show you that next. Whoop, that, that right there. Dreams of Things. What is number? I can't even pick it up. 225. It's stuck with the other one. With 224. There's Dreams of Things 225. This one's a little different for me with all that cloud background of some so most of this is negative space with that cloud background and these two i don't know is she an angel is he a devil i didn't even think about that as i was kind of like <laughs> he's in hot orange devilish covers co colors and he's got horns she's got wings that could be an angel devil thing i didn't even think about that as i was drawing it that's weird it wasn't sometimes i don't see these things until i put it up on screen and see it in a different form 
But there we go. A little bit of dreams of things there for you with that. I, I, I just ordered a whole bunch of new markers, by the way. So they'll be coming in sometime soon. Uh, and this is, I don't know if you read my blog or heard me talking about this on uh, our Friday night show, but I bought a bunch of cheap pops for like 3 or $4 back in December because I got it in my head that I wanted to paint some. Uh, and they sat, I have like, I'm like, I know they're going to sit around for months. And they sat around for just, you know, two months. So this is the one I painted. I painted one other, the first, this is my second one. So this is just me taking some acrylic paint pens and acrylic paint. And um, I can't even, this is a bobblehead pop. I can't even remember who this is. The pink pants and the chains are the only thing that are the same. The rest I, I repainted all of to make her into an art monster. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take some pops and repaint them when I feel like it to make them into art monsters. A new thing to do to waste my time. Well, there you go. Two different types of art for you this week. Some comic books, and you guys have a good week out there.